All right, y'all, for our next activity, we have a little air puck here. Um, and uh, you've got a class set of these, and there's a small switch in the back there. They take two AA batteries, and yes, it's one of the annoying screws to have to, so you have to use a small screwdriver. One of these guys to be able to get into it. Um, so, but the good thing is they, the batteries last for a fairly long time. Um, the way they use them is that you can talk to the kids about the fact that if you just slide it across the table, it takes a great deal of force to move this anywhere. However, if you turn it on with a small fan inside, it's going to then create a little cushion of air. Then, even the slight slope of this floor is going to get this moving in the direction. And now it's very little effort to have this move across the entire table. Okay. These are also really handy to show kids uh, interaction forces. So if I hit an object, um, I can bounce a ball off of this, for instance, then what direction is this going to be moving? What direction is my ball moving? We'll take two of these and hit them together. Because they have that very uh, small amount of friction, um, even the smaller forces around them are going to uh, be able to interact with them and push them going in one direction or another. So it's a very handy little uh, demonstration tool for that, um, uh, especially on a nice tile floor, they work exceedingly well. Now the other thing that can go on with this is, uh, so if you want to then uh, maybe try this on different surfaces, but you want to have a consistent uh, force applied to it. Uh, if the kids move it with their hands, obviously that's, you know, uh, it's different, it's random each time, each kid's going to have a different point. So one thing you can do is uh, a chair works well, and I've just strung some rubber bands along the edge here, so I've tethered the rubber bands together, um, and so I can use this. If I then uh, use a ruler, I can say, okay, take a ruler to the floor, I, can, I need to pull this back two inches, three inches, or centimeters, please use centimeters, thank you. Uh, back and then let it go, and then that way I have a nice consistent force to be applied. And of course, this is more effective when you use a much larger area, so if you're having the kids see how far across the room this travels, then on a desk, obviously, you can probably just use them with their hands, but this allows you to be able to kind of ramp up the scale of this without um, having to build a complicated uh, device to to give them a consistent push. Now, uh, one of the things that kids are often going to have problems with is if you try to time them, for instance, uh, there are lots of timers in the market. In fact, you're going to get a set of timers that go down to a hundredth of a second, but if you've worked with kids before with your timers, you know they're not that consistent. They're not paying attention. They're staring off on the side. They push the button randomly. Um, so sometimes the timing data you get from them is, is wildly uh, inaccurate. Um, so the other tool that you can use for this, and my, a couple other ways, is something called the Go Motion Probe. And this is what's called the Go Motion Probe. It's called, it's from Veneer. Um, and it uses sonic pulses, uh, so it's a sonar actually, to be able to measure things. Um, one of its limitations is that if the object is too small or the object is too low, it has a hard time tracking it. So if you're using an object like this, for instance, you can build a sail for it, for instance. Um, or, so for instance, if you try a Hot Wheels car, that's not going to work. It's going to be too small to be able to show up on the sonar. It doesn't have the resolution it needs to be able to do that. But if I have a larger piece here, um, then as it sails by, it's going to have a much larger presence on the sonar field. Be able to work. So the way this works is it sends out a series of sonic bursts out this way, and when this slides past it, it's going to disrupt that sonic change. It's going to send back the sound into the receiver here, and that's going to be able to keep track of this. This plugs straight into through a USB cord goes straight into a um, computer, and so for instance, the software. It looks like this. I will tell you right now, the software takes a little bit get, 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 getting used to it. There's a, some instructions to come with it. And you download the software. They don't even give you a CD with it anymore because, of course, your laptop probably doesn't have a CD drive anymore. Um, but you download the software. It's called Modern Pro Lite. And it gives you a bunch of different options in terms of how to uh, 
how to use it. One of the nice things to do, because your kids often struggle with how to graph uh, motion. So they have something called match function on this, and so you can click on this, and it creates a random uh, graph here. So you have position on the side here, and you have time going across the bottom. And it's getting the kids to try to match this. So when we turn this on, for instance, it's going to create pulses and, and try to collect information off of it. And if I don't do anything, I don't see any motion. There's no change. So a little over one meter, um, what's happening is that it's hitting an object, in this case, this ball right here. But since that ball is not moving, my line showing motion is flat. Okay. Now, if I go back over that and I say, let's collect again, and I put my hand in between, I'll move it, and then I can start to get some motion with it. Um, I can even turn this, for instance, and as I can collect it, I can walk up to it or walk away from it, and you can see it's collecting the data off of where I am. Now, I'm doing a terrible job of matching this here, for instance. One of the things the kids can do is they can use your, their hand to try to match it. Um, so let's see. And if you get the kids thinking about this, this is about half a meter, so about a foot and a half away. I need to start, I need to stay steady, not move my hand at all. And then after a couple of seconds, I need to move my hand further away. So I'm going further away rather than closer. And these are all things your kids need to work on as they go through. So we'll try to match it and see what happens. So about uh, halfway by here, ready, set. Okay, so here I made a mistake. I was starting to go on the right slope, but I moved it up too far and I left the area of um, control. And then I came back and I was too low. Well. So the kids can physically do this. Now it helps if the kids can see the screen while they're doing this because they can then match their physical motions to what they need to do for the screen. Okay. Now, um, so they, in the match, every time you hit match, it's going to come up with a different. Every time you hit match, it's going to come up with a different type of slope the kids need to do. It's just randomly coming up. So you could do this all day with the kids. Again, this could be a group activity where you are maybe rotating through a variety of options. And this is something where the kids are, are just checking themselves, getting used to how does this show motion, for instance, uh, the slope of the line, how does it show motion, the distance being shown versus the time in the bottom. The other thing you can do with this is you can use it as a timer, especially if you're talking to a group about the inaccuracies of the students using the timer. If you put um, this on, let me do a clear screen here, and then I say collect. very clear change here. Now these are uh, one second, two seconds, so that I can have it within a, a tenth of a second or so roughly in terms of this is how long this machine, this, uh, this vehicle was crossing over that threshold. Now if I want to get more specific, I can make a smaller section, so I can fold this in half even and stand it up, or even maybe narrower and get a smaller, more uh, precise piece here, and that's the way I can use this. Other ways you can use this would include being able to um, hold this and then bounce a ball over it. See, so if you get the ball for me, and we'll bounce it off of this. And we're just going to, um, I'm just going to hold this and you bounce the ball underneath it and we'll collect the okay. data on there. All right. So you stay where you are, I'll move this over. over <laughs> and let go. Okay, you just right? tell me to go. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we're using a soccer ball instead of a basketball or a gym ball, for instance. Uh, with a little more um, variety of, uh, with a different air um, in it, for instance. 
you would be able to see it balance better. But here you can see, this is a really nice, actually, uh, periodic uh, function. You can see a wave function going on here, actually, of the balancing um, less and less. So here it's getting closer to the uh, probe, and then it balances, and then only move about half that distance, and then another half, and then a half, and then a half, and then a half. So there's some, some very interesting patterns. Kids don't have to do it. They're not doing math on this. You're not going to a, a high school or a college level physics class with this. But it allows the kids to see some of these patterns in a way that they're not being, not thinking about in their head um, with this. Uh, the other nice thing is a, is a connection to oceans and landforms. If you use one of these actually as sonar. So if I were to say this is a boat, for instance, and I wanted to um, map the undersea floor, I move this across my table, and if this was a boat up here on the surface, and then I see this, oh, I know there's some, something underwater here. So you can have your kids, uh, even if you make an a, a undersea typography for them, they have to then match. So they're moving this at one level, and of course a, a meter stick kind of guiding this across the, the same level would be useful, but there are things underneath kind of whether it's a box or books or whatever that have to show maybe what's a, what's a seamount look like, what's the uh, um, mid-ocean ridge going to look like, for instance. So they can do a couple of things to be able to try to map that here and then be able to see it in large scale. Um, since this has, uh, you know, and um, this has variables that you can change in terms of the scale on either side, you can, this is set to go five seconds, but you're, you're, you can set it for continuous uh, tracking, uh, uh, collecting the data so that it can go for as long as you want. This is dumping the data into your computer. Um, so you can have it go for much longer, 20 seconds, a minute, you know, two minutes, to give the kids the time it takes to be able to kind of map something like that. Out. So the Verner probe is pretty useful for that. Uh, as long as you use objects, let's say, above the size of a matchbox car so that you can see it um, and you can, you can use it well to do a variety of things. There's a bunch of different options in here. This, this software is made for more like middle school options, uh, middle school students, but uh, the match button is the, the biggest one. The, the collect allows you to collect the, the, the raw data. Uh, you do get a nice graph or chart here to be able to kind of look at the information. And you have options inside for then changing the units if you want to speed instead, if you want to change how long the, the timer needs to work. All those things are possible with the Go Motion Pro. Thank you.